Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will take a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to animate a car in the Firefinder app. It will start from 3DX Mass. So this is imported. I'm just going to I'll go ahead and then import the car also. Now, immediately I imported the car. I just want it to be on a new layer. So everything is selected. I'll click on this icon, create new layer. And uh, we have a new layer for the car. And to finish up the importation, um, I'm going to select this whole layer, which is the car. And uh, I'm just going to move it at the starting point, purported starting point of my animation. The next step is to prepare the car for animation. We have to group all the members of the car into five major groups, the main body of the car, and then four tires. For me to do that, I would um, want to turn off all the other layers so that I'm not distracted. So in trying to divide the car into five parts, the first thing I want to do is to ungroup the car. Select the car. If it's grouped, under group, you ungroup it. And I want to first separate the cars from the body. So I'll select everything that has to do with the tires. Uh, all my tires are attached. There's some models, they are not. So I'm just going to select everything that has to do with the tires together and create a new layer for them and then attach everything that has to do with the body together. So as they are selected, I'll click on a new layer and then I'll name this tire. So this particular element is done together with the tires. I turn it on and turn it off, it's there. So you ensure that everything that is with the tires is hidden and then you select the body, go to edit poly, go to attach, just beside the attach, click on the attach list. And then um, if I select everything here, holding down the shift button and clicking on attach, and uh, material ID, you can leave it match material to ID. This whole element, is attached as one editable poly and that's what we want for our car to be properly animated so if i move this it's not grouped it's just one element uh i can turn the bentley off to work quicker and turn on the tires so i have to do that for each of the tires so that we can have five components it's still the same thing with um detaching and attaching so if once i do the first one i'll just fast forward it up so i'll select this click on edit poly and what i want to do first of all is to click on element because all the tires are together and detach them. So um, once you click on the element, you have to select it one after the other. I'll select this, click on detach, and then I can give it a new name and then do it again for the next one. I'll repeat the process over and over again for different components. Okay, so after detaching the the tires and making sure they are all independent, you attach them back to make sure everything is just one element. While attaching, ensure that you match material IDs to material. It's important to note that in some models, you don't need to do this because all the tires are separate. So if I turn on my Bentley, my car is now five objects. Just to make sure that everything is properly done, you can go to your hierarchy under pivot, select affect pivot only and center to object. So this is good. So. The next step is to animate your car. We are going to animate our car using plugin Raft Director Studio. So I'll leave a link to download it and install it as a plugin. You click on Craft Director Studio, you click on Start Director Studio. The first icon you are going to click is this guy here. You click and hold and you select uh, the car you want. For us, it's a four wheel external car. So I'll click on this. Once you click on that, the dummy car appears at the center point. For me personally, I would prefer to have everything with four wheeler on a different layer. So I'm going to shift, select everything, make sure everything is selected is on four wheeler. Click a new layer for it. And then 
they are all going to be in that layer separate from all the other layers so once i double click on this it enables me to select the layer i'll click and move it to where my car is and then i'll rotate select the rotate button you can turn on your snap to for rotation so it's easy rotate in 90 degrees move it to superimpose it on your existing car and then scale it to almost the same size with the scale button here make sure you use the universal scale so i'll move to and make sure that the tires are as aligned as possible and um, this mustn't be exact but it should be close to it the next step we're going to take is to link and align the whole dummy to the car so the process is at first you link and align the tires then you link and align the body so let's begin you select the dummy tire you click the align tool which is here and then you select the actual car tire that you've linked as one element make sure xyz are all turned on and make sure you do center to center here and click apply and okay also you repeat it for the four tires select this align select the tire After aligning the four tires, then we'll start to link it. We'll link the body of the car to the dummy and then we'll link the tires of the car to the dummy. To use the link tool, you click select and link under the toolbar. Then you select the car first and then you link it to the body of the car. So that's done. Then you select the tires and then you link it to the, the dummy tires. So you have to be careful to make sure you select your actual car first and then you link it. So to link, you just click and drag and then it links. At this point, we'll have to do some settings just to prepare our car for animation. I can click here to just uncheck the link. So the, the two things we'll do on the Craft Director Studio. One is to double click on this external wheeler and set a profile for our car so we can Leave it as a sports car since our car is a, a really good car, sports car. There are many other settings here, but we're not going to that. Save as profile and close. The next thing you want to do is to set up your controls, which is here under this impute. Under the impute profiles, depending on what you are using, uh, you select one, but we have the keyboard. So we'll just select the keyboard here. The keyboard forward is to move up, backward is to move back, left, right. Uh, the booster is page up if i want to change the booster for example to shift i can do that let me say i want to have burnout i think it was on home before so i might just leave it on home and then i'll click close so i've done these two things and the next thing that is left for me is to test out my animation if i click this green icon i can hide everything about the craft studio animation then i can click on record it's going to be a three minutes countdown and if i move my keyboard you can see my car is moving you can see the car is moving backwards. So it's animating. So that's not a problem. I'll click stop and uh, move this back to the starting point. The next step after animating the car is to link the uh, car animation to the model you have. You do that by linking this particular element here, the gravity element to your model. So you click the link tab, you select it, and then you select a particular road of stuff the, the car will work on. After that, we'll try and recreate our animation. So I'll click on record and see if it stays on that component. Now, this is the SketchUp model I imported. And if you notice, the car is falling off. So to solve this challenge, uh, I'm going to create a plane and then use that plane as the starting point. So I'll go to create, create a plane. And then um, just over the road, I'm going to create a new plane. I can go ahead to delete this particular plane. What I'm going to do is to add a modify tab of edit pulley to it. I'll go and um, ensure that it's placed at the right position I wanted it to be. I think it's somewhere here. To ensure that your car goes through obstacles, like this is an obstacle, this is a different height, you will need to attach every face of all those elements into one specific pulley. So what I want to do now is to select this mesh, uh, bring out every face and every element I need from the, the file I exported into this point. I want to bring out everything I need, uh, detach them, 
as a separate component and attach them to the plane. I can also attach this screen if I want. I can select um, detach and then create a new geometry from this. Select this plane under editable poly. Uh, click on attach and select this element. So once I do that, everything would be attached to this plane as an editable poly. After attaching this, you have to relink it. So I'll click on link. I'll select this and I'll link it to this plane. Now, this is very important for you to allow the car to climb all the obstacles on the plane. You have to link this to the gravitational uh, direction tool. So you click, drag, and that's all. So after that, I'll go ahead and try my animation. So I'll click on record and then start moving the car. Um, then I move the car and then I'm going to go this way. So we've animated our car. I can turn off this layer that has to do with the whole um, craft studio element. And once I press play, uh, you can see the, the car moving. And um, it goes, climbs here, and uh, climbs over the ramp, turns and parts. So the next thing we're going to do is to export. So we've done our animation. Uh, it ends at somewhere, I think, around 6.50 or thereabouts. So I just want to adjust my timeline. I'll click on this icon here and adjust this to my, my frame count to, let's say, 6.50. And that's okay for me. So to export to the five render, the first thing you need to do is to convert your animated object into an editable mesh. So this is very important to export as .abc. So right click, convert to editable mesh. Without this, your file will not open in the file render. After that, I'll go to file, select export, export selected, and export it as animated car and sites, because this is just what I want to focus on. I didn't change anything in the options for the .abc file, so no need to worry. I also export this file also using the D5 render plugin. Now, this is a trick I use to be able to copy materials because D5 exports materials, but .abc doesn't export materials. So I'm just going to export this car site materials. I'm going to use it to copy materials. So once that is done, I can hide this, hide this, and hide the car. Then I'm going to select the rest things here I can see and then export them using D5 render because this is also going to export the file with materials. So I don't want to stress myself applying materials again. In D5 and uh, I'll start by importing my object. So I'll click on the import icon. I'll import the D5 files and .abc files. The .abc file takes quite a while to load, so you have to be patient. We'll go ahead and import our file. Sometimes when you import in .abc files, the scale might be way off. So I'll um, just check the scale difference. This is 4603, so I'm going to just copy this, um, select this, and then paste it here to reduce the scale to the right end. I think it has taken this file very far away from uh, my other files. So I'm going to just select both of them and tap the Z key. This is almost like what we need. Now, the main reason I brought this one here is to enable me to copy materials quickly. So if I use the I2, select this, I use the O2, I can copy materials between these two elements very quickly. After transferring the materials uh, between the .abc file and the D5 render export, I hit the D5 render export, and then I'll merge these two files together. I can do that on plan by typing T, selecting this D5 file because it's the easier file to move. I've been able to align the files properly. If I select my animated file and press play, you would see the car driving into the builder. So the next step is to flood my scene with everything else and prepare my render.
Okay, so after applying materials, we'll start animation. When this is selected, make sure the animation is turned on and play mode. There are two ways to fix it. We have the continuous play mode and we have the worst play mode. I think we can leave it in the continuous play mode so that you can always see uh, the beginning and the end of your um, animation. So for me, my animation starts here. And so I, I'm already aware of where to set my camera. Okay, so I'll... I'll start my animation here. All you need to do is your normal animation. You click your view. Uh, you go this way. Uh, you can use alternate V to uh, move your camera. And uh, I can add another shot here and make this place is seven seconds long. You are going to see the real time movement of the car. Uh, sometimes when you play it back, it hangs a little bit, but nevertheless, you'll get the picture as time goes on. So you have to wait for the lag to appreciate uh, what you're doing. And then uh, I'll take a shot, create a new shot entirely, and then uh, take another shot. I'll leave this at uh, three seconds and see how it plays. So this is the uh, tutorial is not very focused on um, material application and rendering. I will just uh, speed up these areas to apply materials, cut the camera sense, and then render our animation.